Hello and welcome to School Talks. I'm Purva and today we have with us Clary Ma'am. She plays a pivotal role in shaping the educational landscape at our school. She is the director of schools at St. Willy Broads. Hello Clary Ma'am, welcome to School Talks. How have you been? Thank you Purva for the warm welcome. I'm doing absolutely fine and it's a privilege to be a part of this podcast. So Clary Ma'am, uh, can you tell us how the transition from being a teacher to now the director has been and how has the journey been so far? It's been over a decade uh, and a half since I've been a teacher and that is a very close experience to my heart because I always loved interacting with children, loved teaching, influencing little minds, shaping them and that made me, it gave me so much of, you know, happiness and to see the transformation in the children to see the spark of curiosity in their eyes, to see the hunger for knowledge, that uh, made me even more passionate to shape uh, them, to make a difference to them, to influence them. Well, and I after uh, uh, being the teacher, I had the privilege to be the school principal. And now it was a little different story, but it was a good thing that I was a teacher in the class. So I had the first-hand experience of seeing the teaching learning happening in the right. classroom. So it was a privilege because I was able to help the teachers. I could see what problems they were facing. I could guide them uh, well, I should say. And, uh, you know, to coach and to guide teachers and staff who are the backbone of our school ecosystem. That is a great thing. And uh, it, cre you know, it, it creates a ripple effect. So whatever uh, the leader or the school leader as a principal uh, what culture you want to build, what values you want to instill, what learning you want to give the children, it goes down as a ripple effect. Right. So the teachers take it, the whole school has that culture and then goes down to children. And it's so fulfilling to see that happen. And now I'm here as the director of schools where I have a broader perspective. I can see uh, how to build this school ecosystem, the community, and uh, to give the children a good learning experience to empower the students because today the needs are so different from what we have over a decade of uh, ago. And to empower the teachers because they are the front liners who are going to the classroom and who are you know, dealing with the children and the, facing the parents, the first hand people who are coming in touch with right. all these uh, teaching and learning. So currently you're working very closely with teachers, right? I mean, how is how does that feel? I mean, you know, coming from being a teacher, how are the shared experience? What are those shared experiences that you have with them? For me, especially personally, I have been able to work in a place as a teacher and uh, continue there as a principal. So I had right. more insight into the institution, the organization. I could understand the needs of right. the children. Yeah. I knew what are the things that the staff uh, need to develop, you know, what areas. I knew uh, at least I had an idea of what the parents' concerns are, what what uh, they they want from us. So based on that, it has helped me, you know, in uh, making that uh, making things available to them uh, to guide uh, guide the teachers in making the taking the teaching learning path in the right direction. Right. So, Clary Ma'am, can you share some insights about how you're making St. Willy Broads a better school? Yeah, so today you can see there are hundreds of schools around. Right. Yeah, and a lot of new schools coming up also. But it's not just about building schools. And when you say making schools uh, better, it's again better in so many ways. It's not just about True. the infrastructure. The buildings, uh, schools are not just about the bricks and mortar, you see. It's more than that. It's about the kind of experience that the children get in the school. It's the skills that they develop. So uh, it's about how they are, uh, we are preparing them for life. Uh, what kind of innovative me methods we are following. Uh, and to make them future ready. We yeah. are a future inspired school. So we want the children to be ready for future. So we need to make sure that we instill in them values at the same time skills. So, you know, uh, the world is changing so rapidly. And for the children to be able to cope up with the change, they, it's not, uh, the classrooms are not just the only thing or the building is not the only thing. They need to develop resilience, to thrive in such a changing world. They need to think critically. Yeah. They need to adapt to the changes. So these are the skills that we 
uh, you know as a school have to have to make it better so how are you developing these skills in your children these 21st century skills that you just spoke about uh, the say cognitive thinking and these leadership skills that are so very needed today so uh, today it is very competitive right if we compare it to, to our times Uh, today it is so competitive and there is a lot of information explosion that is all you know all the information is already there so children need to be guided in the right direction there are children who can self learn as well because of the availability of information and knowledge so what we need to do is we need to build in them the skills the knowledge is already there at the click of a button you get it you don't even need a teacher but then how will the child pick the right knowledge so right. we need to guide them and to build skills in them so a uh, skills like as you mentioned the 21st century skills of creativity collaboration this this comes uh, you know by practice so we have uh, uh, you know uh, learning by doing giving experiential learning to students we have activities every mm. month uh, you know competitions of various kinds because we have to cater to different uh, needs of students right so we have all kinds of competitions and activities where we are developing these skills uh, we give them project based uh, learning uh, you know where the children are doing some research where they are uh, bringing collating information and presenting it before class so that they can build on their uh, soft skills uh, we also have uh, group activities because it's very important today that they learn uh, to deal with each other of course to uh, build themselves emotionally to be aware of their emotions to uh, accept each other that is so important today so this is how we are trying to you know by giving them these experiences in school uh then design thinking again we have uh designed a curriculum in such a way where children are thinking it's not just the rote learning and you know jump by hearting the answers right, and then right. giving the exam and getting marks but then they need to think to, to analyze how did this happen why did this happen to question uh why it is happening so and again uh the leadership so uh st willy broad school always gives a high uh you know stand for leadership so to to every child is a leader every child is a learner and is right. a leader because he leads his own life so he needs to go in the right, the right direction so we need to equip him or her with the skills that is needed of course so uh, confidence uh, to build uh, the ability to speak in front of others without you know without feeling uh, scared uh, to be able to, to express their ideas openly uh, to def- uh, you know it's not to defend themselves but to put their point across so all these are things that we uh, make sure that our children develop by the various curricular and uh, extracurricular activities that we have for them right would you like to give us an example of how you practice leadership building in your school in terms of you know you can just give an, us as an example about uh, some projects that you have going on yes so we have had a lot of projects uh, in the past as well and even currently we are doing a lot of projects one of the projects that we had uh, before or we have been doing is the student led parents meeting right. so we want to give the student the autonomy the student takes charge of his or her own learning and presents his learning uh, before his parents uh, we recently had the base camps a model of the open house where the children are taking accountability and the responsibility for their learning and they presenting their learning before their parents so this builds in them all this 21st century skills you know of collaboration of creativity presenting thick critical thinking and uh, communication and confidence and things like that also uh, we have uh, student uh, programs like uh, leadership programs trainings for children where we give them exposure to interact with the outsiders uh, leaders of other schools or you know uh, children of other schools right. we also motivate them to participate in extracurricular and co-curricular activities outside uh, the recent project that we had is a word leader project we believe that a pen is mightier than a sword wow and yes. one can create influence uh, you know with just words and written word has so much of power so uh, we had this in- initiative and i think on 1st november we just uh, you know uh, on the authors day we have uh, launched the books on amazon you can check that out as well so these uh, this this is how we are building writers uh, we've had projects like read for change write for change where again we are giving the empower, uh, empowering our students uh, so by doing so uh, you know we are 
literally empowering children to be leaders to take accountability to be responsible to speak out right yeah so you briefly mentioned about the word leader project i mean you know empowering these students to find the author in inside of them you know there's the author you know being an author is a really respectable uh, uh, job in the society you know so how were you able to bring that out in children and how what are the you might have faced challenges obviously would you want to address that a little so a uh, wfc that is right for change program is is been a you know a pr- project that is an initiative of the school so we have had the subject uh, inculcated into our curriculum for over a, a decade now i believe and uh, what has happened is we wanted to take it a step further and we thought why not you know get the children to publish right. this and as a tech savvy school we've had all the technology and you know the resources so why not use it and uh, i think uh, when we give children such opportunity you don't even know what is the hidden potential that they have maybe a child who has got this opportunity today may come out you know doing very well in life later of course. and one of them could be a famous author maybe this is his starting point so to real recognize that uh, every child has a potential and everybody needs a chance to start i think that is what led us to this initiative wow that that sounds really amazing the sort of work obviously that goes into this is would be mighty and you know the potential that you all have recognized in these children are just is just very nice uh, so moving to the point of tech savvy you briefly mentioned that your school is tech savvy tell us a little something about that if you just check with people around they will uh, always uh, point out that saint valley broad has been an innovative school beat the teaching methodologies or at the technology integration of technology so our trustee who is a visionary has always thought of times ahead and we have always been uh, equipped with the, the you know of the finest i must say infrastructure com- uh, when it comes to technology and people who know how to use it right. so it's very important not just having the technology but then to be able to use it and to use it in the right way and to the best way possible right. and with that kind of a vision Uh, that is how we've been able to do you know so much we have been able to give teachers devices the teachers are preparing their presentations for the classrooms with it where the teachers are researching on new methodologies uh, or relevant videos where they can you know show the children and children learn by seeing isn't it it's not just the auditory learning that happens it's visual it's uh, experiential so when children see it they learn better it registers better So going slightly on a tangent there you said that children uh, they they watch something and they that, then you know their learning gets better so how are teachers adapting to that or uh, do you have any sort of training uh, you know in video making or something like that that you want to share so we have always had a lot of trainings okay we focus a lot on the professional development of the teacher or the staff even students for students also we we uh, believe that continuous improvement we believe in continuous improvement is one of our values and uh, we believe that uh, see things are changing so fast and we need to pace up and we need to be with the times right, right. so uh, that is the reason we have inculcated the technology and we have given uh, the teachers the opportunity to bring forward so what we do is uh, uh, teachers first of all research and they bring out the uh, appropriate videos which is already available also recently we have had a you know initiative again where uh, we have chosen a program where teachers learn how to make their own videos oh wow so it is about uh, sometimes the teachers are not able to find the exact content for a right. particular lesson maybe or even if they found something may not be age appropriate so in that case the teachers can prepare their own content and today content creation is so such a huge uh, you know thing that is happening around and uh, children are interested in that yeah. so if you involve a child to make the content so our our uh, where we are going is we want children to create content so that edu- whatever learning happens is registered so clearly that they will it is a for life right you know, forget it and at the process in the process they are enjoying it also it's say so many other skills as well yeah so they are learning from each other and it's not like a burden but it is so enjoyable this is about they find joy in right. i think moving forward we have to have some gamification of education where you know children enjoy it and they take the ownership and you know uh, when i was young uh, this whole technology uh, was looked uh, it was a taboo for for us you know um, I, my parents always thought that if i was on my phone or i was making something on my laptop or something it was just i was doing something wrong 
so you know if we are able to achieve this you know this bond between a teacher and students of the, of you know them making videos and them having a slight exposure to you know social media not not social media per se but technology uh, it would be great right yeah obviously so uh, we will have to guide again the guide the teacher has to be the guide to show them what is right and what is wrong right yeah there's a lot of things that are available but then what is the right thing to do what is the right thing to choose they should be in making informed decisions so for that purpose we will have to educate them uh, about you know what is right and what is wrong and to uh, use it in a right way so what we want out of our children is that they are doing things in the right way and at the same time they are learning and they enjoy what they are learning of course uh so clary ma'am i had this one question about how you are addressing this whole stage fear in children because you know today it's very important for children to get out there be on stage be in the spotlight uh you know to be confident how are you sort of building this in children yeah so it's so important for children to be you know in the limelight right because uh, people have uh, look for followers people look for likes and things like that right. and, and today's kids we see that it affects them so much but you see those are not important things to have some follow x number of followers on instagram or something like that the child should be able to stand up for himself in front of a crowd and speak what his mind uh, you know what he feels right. and that is the confidence that he has and we have to build on this the skills so in order to build the confidence in order to get rid of stage fear continuous uh, you know continuous uh, opportunities have to be given to the students so what we do at school is we have act, as i mentioned we have activities events competitions happening every now and then so that uh, you know on a regular basis so that children are given in, enough opportunities right apart from this we have events like spotlight parent night or all our uh, celebrations that we have or uh, events that we have where we focus that all the children are able to participate they come up on the stage they get rid of the fear and they you know just be a uh, p- performers right yeah to feel comfortable in the skin that they are and to just give their best right because it starts from school you you can't become an adult and then suddenly develop self confidence or you know public speaking skills it has to be uh, developed over time so that is the reason in school we make sure that children get ample opportunities also um clary ma'am would you want to give share some tips with parents how they can sort of you know bring out uh, the confidence in their children you know this what you're doing which it's in school can they do something that you know uh, bring out the confidence in their child bring out the leader in their child at home yes obviously uh, parents do play a pivotal role okay it is now when we are talking about student it's not a uh, just a one man man army of the school who is going to shape the child of course okay it is a journey education is a journey where all of us that is a school community the teachers the parents the students all of them work hand in hand uh, you know to for the progress of the child because as i told the child is a center we want to develop the child and for that all of us have to work hand in hand so as parents what they can do is uh, i do understand sometimes the stresses of life can you know really stress the the parents out right. but then uh, to just motivate the child to see what his likes are rather than pushing something on him that you have to do this or do that right. to talk to them and understand what their likes are to support them and to tell them that they are doing well if they see something good some improvement to appreciate that many a times parents don't feel it you know necessary to say that but then i think uh, a teenager would uh, like a school going child who is in his uh, 12 13 14 years would always want that validation yes. so as parents uh, who are very close to the children most of the time we take it for granted yeah, yeah? we don't say that so i think we should uh, motivate them and uh, even for the efforts it's not the result you see right yeah what happens at the end may not be very good the child has done something so we need to motivate and appreciate their efforts and tell them that's okay next time you can do better right. and then help them uh, you know sit together as one team rather than right. sitting across the table sit side by side and uh, you know make them see the point uh, as teenagers they would be rebellious because if we try to convince them saying something they would never accept it right. because it is like that i just heard a talk where uh, you know it's, it was said that uh, children who are in the teenage or 13 years and about they feel that the parents are stupid 
till they are 24 years once they are 24 years they feel that oh my parents so great right. so you know that is a phase which every parent has to go through yeah. and a child also has to go through the child is going through so many different kinds of changes emotionally physically mentally psychologically so i think uh, we as parents need to be a little more understanding supportive uh, in our, so when we give them that validation when we give them that approval they feel confident naturally yeah. yes and suppose we don't do that Uh, they will look it or look for it outside so i think it's very essential as parents to support the kids in building right. their self confidence uh, so clary ma'am i see that uh, you know from what i understand is uh, there are stages in a, a kid's life in a child's life uh, basically uh, when the child is young just showing up would matter right for them for the child and you know as they grow old the 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 whole sh- the parent and the child they have a very shift they have a shift in their relationship right so would you want to address that maybe you know give some tips out to the to, to parents maybe just tell them to be patient anything yes uh, a child always looks out for his parent in a crowd yeah right. though at home he may not gel very well with his parent but when he is outside he always looks out for his parent so it's very essential that parents are there attend events be a part of their learning yeah. um attend the meetings because that shows them that you care yes so uh, you don't have to say it yeah, yeah that i care for you but your actions need to speak of course yes so parents have to be there at uh, the, with their children to and show up for them so that the child feels uh, secure that right. his parent is having his back thank you so much clary ma'am for that uh, so another question that i want to ask you is that today schools have become very expensive what do you think are the factors contributing to this so there are a lot of factors that contribute to the why schools have become expensive okay first of all is uh, you know the technology that today schools have and need to have at least a basic uh, you know need of having such uh, technology and the other resources that are needed which comes with the cost so right. schools have to be able to afford it and uh, good uh, staff quality when we have to maintain uh, quality in education we have to make sure that we have the right people so which again comes with the cost so in order to provide and the safety and security of children which are of paramount importance again there are a lot of things that you know demand uh, you know the, uh, where the cost factor comes in to ensure that the safety and security of the child is you know uh, maintained in the school so all these are the different factors that contribute to why schools have become expensive correct and you know when we I mean, we talk about schools have become expensive but then you know it, 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 there's a reason why 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 they've become expensive and at the end all we want is the betterment of our child to give them the best right yes as every parent wants to give them the uh, give their child the best okay yeah. whatever i had as a parent i would think i want to give a better uh, you know of experience a better education to my child and this goes on for generations nobody wants to give less because they always see they are children above them you know in a position or in a place above them and doing well in life so that is the reason uh, think like that. <laughs> yeah thank you so much clary ma'am for being here it was very nice talking to you the insights that you provided everything you spoke from such pure heart and you know it's really visible from the interaction that we've had thank you so much for being here yeah it was my pleasure i had a lovely time too thank you so much 